Welcome to another 10 with Ken. I'm Ken Steele. Every fall, my videographer and I hit the road to attend the world's largest post-secondary consumer show, the Ontario University's Fair. Typically, 130,000 prospective students and parents flood the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. Ontario's universities send their best ambassadors to represent them, including, for most, their presidents. The 10 with Ken team spent two full days on site speaking with more than a dozen presidents or their designates about recent trends, future directions, and institutional innovation. Remember, when I talk about higher ed innovation, I mean much more than just incubation or research commercialization. Check out our episode describing the full innovation spectrum. One of the most challenging questions I posed at OOF was how institutional leaders can nurture a culture of innovation on campus. We heard some insightful and interesting answers which generally coalesced around 10 key ideas about people, initiatives, values, and culture. They apply to colleges as well as universities, in North America and around the world. This week, part one of How to Spark Innovation. Let's take 10 and take stock. 10 with Ken is an almost weekly look at higher ed news, trends, innovations, and bright ideas, in and out of the classroom. Brought to you by Eduvation. Although universities are responsible for cutting-edge research breakthroughs and revolutions in science and technology, when it comes to their structure and operations, they are still astoundingly traditional places. I think you are correct. We are agents of change for other people, not necessarily for ourselves. There's a lot of forces, you're absolutely right, in, in universities that are very conservative. Probably half of the oldest institutions on earth are universities. We have a deep, deep tradition. It can be the unions that are afraid of anything that they fear might shake things up. I would say that universities are academically conservative institutions. It can be a long time staff that have been there for 30 years and can't imagine anything changing. One of the things that you hear most commonly in universities is, well, that's how we do it here. That's how we've always done it here, right? And oddly enough, you'll even hear that at a place like Nipissing University that's only 25 years old. It can be uh, some of our students who don't want things to change. It's always challenging to run a 21st century institution in, on 19th century structures. And yet, as you may recall from a couple of episodes ago, higher ed is facing nine powerful external forces for change. Universities will have to be a little more nimble than they are now in order to, to produce some of the things that these students that we're seeing here today are looking for. If you're not innovative, if, if you're stale and static, you're going to lose students. So universities are very motivated to be innovative. Necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is the mother of invention. And I think necessity is the mother of innovation as well. Although universities tend to be, somebody once told me, as conservative as cats, they are also hugely creative places. And, and if there's one thing universities are good at doing, it's good at recreating themselves in useful ways. My experience is that universities are uh, hotbeds of innovation. All innovation comes out of developing new knowledge and, and developing new ideas and encouraging discussion and criticism. That to a large extent is very much part of a traditional university mandate. We are being asked to look at doing things differently and changing things and rather than being scared of it I think it's it's really opening up a lot of opportunities. So I think university leaders have a significant responsibility in building a culture of innovation on their campuses. Last spring we explored this question with University of Waterloo President Farid and Hamdelopper. If we are to exist as an institution of higher learning, not today, but 10, 15, 20 years from today, we must believe in innovation, without which we will become insignificant. So universities have a deeply ingrained, risk-averse, consensus-driven academic culture with perfectionist tendencies and zero fault tolerance. Higher ed is facing significant external pressures for change, while everyone working on campus is also coping with relentless time and budget constraints. For years, I've been coming back over and over again to the same question. How can institutional leaders nurture creative thinking, an entrepreneurial mindset, and a campus culture in which innovation can flourish? 
It's a good question. That's a wonderful question, Ken. <laughs> Nice, easy question. <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. How do we find ways to encourage and support people who step outside the box? The good news is it's certainly not impossible, but it's not simple either. According to the dozen university leaders I spoke with at the OOF, there are at least 10 key answers to the question. We're going to explore them over the next few episodes. First and foremost, everyone agrees that campus engagement and dialogue are critical. Making sure that inside the university there's time to discuss the big ideas. So I don't think there's other ways than through broad conversations on campus. It could be in the shape of a strategic plan that takes university-wide consultation. To be highly collaborative within our university environments, you know, to have deep dialogues about our academic plans, about our research plans, about our visions and missions for the universities. The leaders of the institution have to be able to lead a compelling vision and getting community engagement into that vision. Framing some big ideas, some big visions, and then chipping away at it little by little. If we can have structures that capitalize on our sitting down and meeting with each other and thinking face to face, I think we can ask in a respectful way, why do you do it like that? Isn't there a better way to do it? Isn't there a quicker way to do it? One that's more responsive to what students are looking for? The Carleton Leader Program brings together half faculty, half admin. And over the course of six months, they'll work on solving that problem. But it's the mix of the two sides of the campus, so to speak, that provides for people to start changing their outlook and maybe coming up with different ideas for things and seeing things from the other point of view and bringing in outside people, outside speakers. Special speaker series. I think it's an excellent idea to bring in outside speakers on emerging trends. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased. Retreat days for big groups. Getting them away from their cell phones for a few minutes. Letting go of the formalities of everyday life and, and then having these big ideas floating around. Sometimes that's where you can get people saying, yes, let's do this. Every time I have a chance to meet, uh, to meet the department, and I, I think it's important to get out of the office and to meet the departments, I encourage the people that do uh, the real work of the university to think in that way uh, too, and that's usually fairly, fairly well received. Although presidents can lead by example, innovation on campus can't be purely driven from the top down. Consult, consult, consult. Well, I don't think administrators should think they have very many of the answers. Listen, listen, listen. I mean, as a university president, you're quite limited in what you do. Some things might come out from the leader's perspective, but a lot of them, and I think the ones that are going to be more sustainable, are the ones that are coming from the faculty, staff, and students. I think the job is to try to create an environment where everybody feels their innovative ideas are going to be welcomed. Learn from the faculty, learn from the staff, who are at the front edge of all of these changes and innovation. And really giving them space and uh, respect. Learn from uh, the students. It's really important to learn from our students, whether it's through forums or spending time with our students, creating opportunities for them to talk about their changing needs. I think that young people are inclined to innovation. All these dynamic, smart, engaged individuals come into our institutions and they're full of ideas, they're full of life. I think our top students will use the, the wonderful new tools that are available to go forward and to innovate. Young people these days, the ones I get to be with and see and work with, uh, are, they're just, uh, they blow my mind. In a sense, the core mission of universities has always been about airing diverse perspectives. The more we get back to that, supporting basic research, supporting freedom of speech, supporting open intellectual dialogue, the more innovative we're all going to be. Thanks again for taking 10 with me. We've only just begun exploring the question of how college and university leaders can foster a culture of innovation on campus. So far we've looked at the conservative forces within academia and the first two ways to nurture a culture of innovation. We need to foster meaningful dialogue on campus and be sure we're listening to diverse voices, including students and frontline staff. But the campus leaders had 10 answers to the question, and some were really interesting. Next week, we'll continue to explore this question, touching on diversity, practical tactics, and how to protect those pockets of innovation from conservative pushback. So as leaders, we can actually 
uh, be out there like a football blocker. You can run interference. To be sure you don't miss it, take a moment now to join more than 13,000 10 with Ken subscribers and followers on any of a dozen platforms. You'll find links to all these channels in an email subscription form on our website, 10withken.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. 10 with Ken is a production of Eduvation Inc. Copyright 2017. I'm available for conference keynotes, campus PD events, board retreats, and committee workshops, in person or now virtually too. For more information, please visit www.eduvation.guru or 10withken.com.